So the marina owner here, Pete, has put together something called the Blessing of the Fleet. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. Over previous episodes, you'll have seen us not only attempt to make our daggerboard cases and fail at our first attempt of vacuum bagging, but then see us succeed at our second try, getting exactly what we needed. Over the past few weeks, when we've had the best weather, we've gone about finishing our four halves, which will then be glassed together to form our two cases. What you haven't seen yet is where we've bonded our foam cord fiberglass to the back of each half to add structure and rigidity in preparation to glass the halves together. Never make this easy. Of our daggerboard case. We've part of it. Oh, yeah. The mold we use for the daggerboard case is a bit larger than what is actually needed. It's both longer and a little bit taller on the sides, so that gives us areas to cut down so we can make sure that we're getting all the glass where they come together on the sides, make sure it's the full thickness that it's supposed to be. Um, as you can see, this is half the width of what the interior is supposed to be. We were very generous with overlap here, so we got a lot that we actually need to cut off. And what I'm gonna do is just do a quick line along here. Gonna trim that down with uh, the grinder. Get mount that into place, run the router along here with a flush cut bit and trim that down so it's perfect all the way along, including there's a little section that goes for this indent where the bearing rests here. This is the part that actually goes, penetrates through the hole itself. Um, we'll cut it along there. So all four, both sides for each case should be the same. Checkerboard case has erware. Ugh. It's actually the thing I'm looking forward to most is being able to get rid of this table and finally clean this space again. Project for today, now that I have the cases cut down, is to actually go through and put a, apply a barrier coat. We're using the Total Boat Total Protect barrier coat on it. 
and that's going to be for the inner surface, the part that's going to be very difficult to get to once we bond these two sections together. Um, and then on the top and bottom, I'm leaving those bare because I'm going to need to glass this to the deck and to the underside of the hull from the outside in, and I want to make sure I have a good area for that. So only going to do from this area down to there, um, areas that I won't be able to reach later on um, and get that barrier coat in here, which is going to help prevent water. Now this was done in vinyl ester resin, so really it shouldn't be an issue at all, but uh, kind of one of those things better safe than sorry. We'll apply that and get a nice finish in here then. Things are just bustling at the marina today because tomorrow, May 1st, is opening of rockfish season or striped bass as they're also known. So the marina owner here, Pete, has put together something called the blessing of the fleet because Kentmore is full of charter boats. That is what most of these uh, slips are taken up by. So it's a pretty cool experience that I will get into more in a second, but I am about to hop on Mallard to take a ride for the experience. So the boat Mallard I'm getting on actually belongs to someone who you're a little bit familiar with. It's uh, Tucker's dad, Troy, who has been running charters here forever. So even before Tucker started working here, he's actually pretty familiar with the area, um, doing mating on his dad's boat. So I will be experiencing everything along with the boats and then on the marina's beach over here, there is a uh, podium set up where there's going to be um, Pete's going to be talking and then the priest is going to be doing the blessing so Matt will be over there. Tucker! Stephanie Shields, who will give us her rendition of the National Anthem. <laughs> now practiced as a blessing from the local priests and pastors that is meant to ensure a safe and bountiful upcoming fishing season. The blessing of the fleet is a tradition that began centuries ago in Mediterranean fishing communities. Although the practice began as predominantly Catholic, many Christians still participate in this habit each year to ensure a safe and bountiful season. Although some celebrations are full-on festivals, our marina went with a simple ceremony this year, but hopes to keep the tradition going from now on. Today we celebrate the beginning of this year's boating season by joining together for a blessing of our charter fleet. Their 30 year anniversary. Now that the blessing has been given, all of the boats are gonna go out in kind of a procession, so I believe that Mallard might be second but it's kind of fun just watching everybody uh, gear up to head out into the Chesapeake Bay. This boat, Mallard, the captain, Troy Ruth. And Tucker Ruth is made, and Scott Ruth is filling in mate. We ask you to bless all who trade upon our decks this year.
Thanks, Liam. Here comes Eleanor. Is that Uncle Jeff? So right now all of the charter boats are coming out under the um, spray of the fire trucks through the channel and getting their personal blessings, so we're all kind of hanging out here. I think Matt is at the beach trying to get drone footage, but what is really cool is right behind me here, I'm not in focus, uh, on the pole back there I have one of our Insta360 cameras set up so it's getting a 360 degree view of everything, so it's a really cool chance to kind of compare against the drone shots and um, we are signed up for their affiliate program, so if you're interested, any purchases do help us out. We've got that link below, and you can get special deals on like free accessories, so make sure to check that out too. If we have one thing to say about our time at Kentmore so far, it's that this place is 100% a community. The entire fleet of captains know each other, many of them are friends, and all of them will lend a hand to anyone else in need which has even included taking on another boat's guest if they run into any number of issues while on a charter. It was so heartwarming watching each boat parade into the Chesapeake Bay, ending as one big family kicking off the season. As you know, we've been taking many small steps to making our dagger board cases for the boat, and today we are moving forward for a big one because we actually get to glass, <laughs> again, multiple steps. The first step in glassing the halves together, so behind me, Matt is kind of getting them um, ready to line up. We've already done some test fits, and today we're just going to get like the sides bonded together, and then the next step after that will be to like wrap everything in fiberglass. Good, good, good. Look, our dagger board's gonna go in there. Oh, all I have to say is I'm so happy we decided not to make those ourselves. They came with the kit sitting up there. And again, this is something that Max Cruz definitely offered us. We turned them down because we thought we needed more work. But it is definitely an experience building these ourselves. Actually, they're, they're beauty of using a mold is they've come out so they're really close, smooth. Um, there doesn't seem to be a big overlap or anything inside. So we should just be able to bond this section together right here. So this is where the two halves come together. Spaceman Matt is getting ready to grind the sides. So he's just going to go through and kind of even the surface so that where we have the joints kind of meeting up, they're flush. And then we have a box of all of our fiberglass tape cut up already. This is the 1208 uh, mat, the top strand back, 45-45 double bias. And then we'll be able to roll them on the sides and get at least one step closer to finishing these because, again, this is holding up like our fuel tanks, potentially our holding tank. A lot of things can't get done until these are in. All right, we are just about ready to begin glassing. I have gone through the sides and done a styrene wipe to make sure that the surface is clean after Matt had ground it down. And behind me, we've um, kind of took our little wet out station again, which we're gonna roll the resin onto our 1208 fiberglass before bringing it back here. Peel ply is at the ready and yeah, temperatures are good. Let's do this. Project, you'll see us use something that we haven't used much of. It's chop strand mat. Um, whole reason for this is our only concern in this weight doesn't matter here, nothing else really matters. What does is getting this to adhere well. We don't have the largest area, so this is roughly uh, five inches from side to side. So we have a two and a half inch bonding. Our 
only objective here is to adhere as good as possible. And if you see, there is some undulations here. It's a little bit of a roughed surface. Chop strand mat does a much better job of that than just a straight double bias that we normally use. Um, so that's the idea. We'll put down a layer of this, which is five inches wide now. I cut down to size. And then a four inch over the top of that. That's what's going to be here. Then again, that foam core sides will go here, and then we're wrapping the whole thing in unidirectional and double bias at that point. But for this job, chop strand mat works. It is a new day, which means it's time to move on to the next step of our dagger board cases. The last you saw, we went ahead and we added that 1208 chop strand to the sides, bounding the pieces together. So what we need to do now is add the foam core to the sides, which is then going to get it ready to bond everything together with more fiberglass. And because we used this peel ply here, it means that we don't need to do any kind of scuffed sand. So Matt is going to get some extra styrene right now give that a wipe down, and then start preparing to put our uh, structural putty on there. What Matt is doing first is going through with our structural putty inside of a uh, pastry bag and just kind of putting a line into the corners to make sure that those areas get filled and there's no gaps. So my next step now is I am taking the structural putty straight from my uh, cup that I have mixed it in at 2% and I'm kind of just getting a good coat to start on here. Uh, I'm getting a little thick right now, but then, then I will take this trowel and just run it along to get a nice even spread of this before we put it onto the side. And so now Matt is just popping that into place. Everything should be fully coated with our structural putty. And we will be clamping this together once we get both sides on. All right, we've got the first one done here, and although we were hoping to be able to do both right in a row, uh, it turns out that we needed all of our large clamps here to be able to spread the pressure of pushing in the sides, pushing the foam that we had just put in. So we do have to wait for this to cure until we can get to the other one. But as you can see, we've put two by fours on the side and use the clamps on that so all of the pressure is getting spread evenly throughout this foam piece, making sure that it's uh, pushing in as far as it can. So we're just gonna go ahead and let that cure. Today is gonna be a bit of a warmer day, so hopefully it won't take too long. And then we'll come back and we'll do the second one, which we now have sitting under the bridge deck. Yeah, I need it Won't you bend them all? 